we're going to explore some of the rich history, rich traditions of this important Mo'ed, which is really a feast of the Lord. So we're excited to invite you to join us this special Passover. Hello and welcome to our Passover online event. Today, we're going to explore some of the rich history, rich traditions of this important Mo'ed, which is really a feast of the Lord. Yeah, it's a great, it's a national holiday here in Israel. Passover is also called Pesach in Hebrew. That's how you say it in, in Hebrew. And it's a holiday that celebrates the story of the Israelites, our people escaping from the slavery of Egypt, from the whip of the oppressor. And this story is told in the Bible in the book of Exodus. Okay, Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for over 400 years. And with the help of Moses, we were able to escape and find freedom here in the land of Israel. Passover takes place on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, which is really the new year, happy new year. It's really the first of the biblical year. And it always is on a Sunday. Thursday is when first fruits happens in, the, in that beginning uh, of Aviv, spring. And so this is a time of rebirth, a time of renewal. One of the central aspects of Passover is the seder, this meal, this ritual meal that takes place on the first uh, two nights, really, of the holiday. The seder is a time of families and friends coming together and retelling the story of Exodus with a book called the Haggadah, which means the telling. During the Seder, many traditional foods are served, like matzah, you know, unleavened bread, bitter herbs, maror, choroset, it's like that, that, what made the bricks, right? And the matzah is this unleavened bread. There's special matzah as well that's used, but this symbolizes the, you know, this hasty departure. We didn't have time for the bread to rise, so we had to depart in haste. Passover is also known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread because during the holiday, Jewish people, our people here are not allowed to eat any food with leavening agents in it, like yeast. It's a big controversy, what's a leavening agent, what's not? But tradition goes back to the time of the Exodus when the Israelites had to quickly gather all our belongings and leave Egypt, run for our lives, and without even time for the bread to rise. Passover is a time of reflection and gratitude when Jewish people remember our ancestors' journey from slavery to freedom. It's a great time to think about the struggles of people who are still fighting for freedom and to come home to the promised land. There's oppression, there's anti-Semitism in this world today, and I believe that by the power of the very one who raised a cup on Passover, it's called communion, it's that third cup, it's the cup of redemption. I believe that by that power, others, the, 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 uh, the cavalry is coming to help. It truly is a pleasure to be dreaming the dream of the prophets. And that's what Israel was founded on, and that's what sustains Israel. And as we fulfill the prophetic destiny of Israel together with the nations coming around, we see that the prophetic word is the core. This is the Galilee Experience building, and the whole new boardwalk is going to look really good. Uh, I'll be excited to come out here and see what all happens and transpires here. Just keep praying keep believing and wow it is going to be really special really special <laughs> Passover season is so much fun, so much going on every day of Passover. And hey, you notice how when the Red Sea parted on Passover, children of Israel walked through the desert for 40 years, you know, and then Jordan River parts. Also on Passover, during that whole time, the clothes didn't wear out, the shoes didn't wear out. 
But guess what? As soon as you come to Israel, cross through that Jordan River. Well, you need clothes. And clothing to wear for free in our distribution center and see these 40 foot shipping containers come in and we see an ability to also give them food. It's just, it's a blessing. Blessing their socks on uh, in Libracha. It is, it's, a, it's a distribution center for clothes and goods and footwear. It's exciting. Israel needs it. Israel needs your faith to arise. I love when Yeshua in the Galilee, he says, and I saw their faith, and I saw his faith. What does he see when he looks at you, when he looks at me? Does he see our faith? The prophet Amos, Amos, in chapter 9, let me read it, down in verse 14, I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. That's the Aliyah, and they will build the waste cities and inhabit them. That's exactly what we're doing on this five-story building. The prophet Isaiah calls this region the Galilee of the nations in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. We believe that right now, not only did Jesus choose his team of Galileans 2,000 years ago, he's choosing his team of Galileans today, and that includes you. We believe that this five-story building that we want to renovate right now, we've begun renovations on a five-story headquarters where we're going to have a convergence. We're going to have a concentration of a lot of our efforts to bless Israel all in one building. And uh, we have operations throughout Galilee which help all of Israel. So we want to invite you to sow in financially. We want you to come and help us renovate. We want you to come and see it. Be part of the story as we're breaking out walls, windows, and we're rebuilding the whole thing, putting on two more floors. Top floor will be the Museum of the Galileans, where we showcase not only their successes, but their challenges and what they learned from the greatest rabbi of all time, Yeshua. Hey, this headquarters is what it's all about. Thank you for sewing in today. I am so honored to introduce you to the Restoration Tour. This is not a regular tour. Every year we are ecstatic to invite you to come and see the land in, from a local's perspective. I mean, you're meeting the people of the land like the new immigrants, like heroes, like people who have fought in wars. We want to show you the unseen Israel, the local's perspective. Come with us on a Restoration Tour. I'll be your host this September. Register today on the link below. Let's show God's love together. Also, I happen to be the CEO of the Faithful Galileans charity. So, ARC, of course, as you know, does the Hebrew school. It's got the job training center. And of course, we're giving food, clothing, shelter, and so much more to needy immigrants who show up here from all over the world, and they gotta make their footing in the land. And so, when you have all this supporters gathering and showing love, well, let me tell you what, it brings a smile to the faces of people, because they there's a perspective here in Israel that maybe a lot of the world doesn't love Israel, doesn't love the Bible, doesn't love God's plan and purpose. But we show, hey, we're gonna prove to you that there are people who are different than the average uh, person in the world. These are people who stand in the gap. Now, the Faithful Galileans Charity, let me tell you what, we've got over there, there is the uh, worship center called Vertical Galley House of Prayer. There is the Ambassador Academy. That's like a discipleship school. So I just want to say thank you so very much that this special moment, you're standing with us and you're blessing Israel too. God bless Israel! Hallelujah! <laughs>Thank you so much for joining us on this Passover special online. Make sure to join us each year. Now, if you want to know when we're doing the next online event, online special, just open your Bible. We're doing it then. Of course, it's the lunar, not the solar calendar, but we're doing it right when the Bible says to do it. Here online, we invite you to join in.